from the onset of his command leadership of the Nigerian Army, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buretai made up his mind to improve the state of infrastructure and the living conditions of officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army. This is for him to be able to actualize his vision, which is to have a professionally responsive Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional roles. In this episode six of Making a Professional Responsive Army Possible, we will be taking you around Nigeria to see the uncommon infrastructural development in various cantonments and barracks. The Nigerian soldier, a walking machine dedicated to the protection of Nigeria's territorial integrity and support in internal security, has continued to put his life on the line just to ensure that every part of the country is safe and secured for citizens. Most often, the welfare, work environment and total well-being of officers and soldiers, to say the least, a nondescript until the assumption of office of the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buratai in June 2015. After resuming office as the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Buratai reviewed the state of security in Nigeria and the performance of his officers and soldiers and concluded that their morale must be urgently lifted to restore the lost glory of an army that was once ranked as one of the best in the world. A new policy direction of improving the living and work environment if the same army was to bring about the needed change in the security architecture of the country. General Burutai, having served the country nationally and internationally, was determined, like a man on a mission, to rescue the Nigerian state from the hands of terrorists, bandits, kidnappers, armed robbers and other forms of criminalities tormenting the country through the provision of improved and better conditions. As a commission officer, and, uh, and I've commanded, um, you know, uh, strategic uh, formations, and indeed at the international level, and uh, having studied the prevailing security situation and our challenges, and I have uh, been, uh, you know, right, uh, you know, uh, at the place where the uh, strategic decisions I taken. I felt yes, I, I I have to put all those challenges together to bring out my vision for the Nigerian Army, uh, which is to have a professionally responsive Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional roles. This new policy direction from the helmsman of the Nigerian Army has charted a new course for the Army aimed at correcting the lapses that has led to the low performances of officers and soldiers, especially as it relates to their welfare, availability of needed fighting machineries and work environment. It is a fact that the better part of the life of an officer or soldier is mostly spent in his work environment, where he daily carries out the enormous task of protecting Nigeria and Nigerians. The state of infrastructures, where many life-saving decisions for many years have been in total state of neglect or either not available. This has greatly dampened the morale of officers and soldiers, thereby negatively impacting on their performance. These deliberate efforts of the Chief of Army Staff to motivate officers and soldiers by providing them with a state-of-the-art office accommodation world-class fighting equipment and a conducive temporary or permanent living accommodation with basic amenities has marked a turning point in the infrastructural setback the Nigerian army was faced with. A tour of most of the army divisions and formations brought to fore the urgent need to make the work environment of officers and soldiers of the Nigerian army more comfortable and serene. If you work in a conducive environment, the best in you will come out. But if, the if your workplace environment is hostile, definitely you may not, despite the fact that you are trying to be rugged and when you are talking of brain work, working in offices has to do with brain tasks. So if you have an, a conducive environment, you are able to reason straight, you are, you are able to turn out 
what is required of you in good time. You are able to respond. And no matter how beautiful the office is, offices are only meant for planning, for coordination, and for support to the field. The establishment of the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command in October 2018 by the Chief of Army Staff stamped the resolve of the Nigerian Army to win the war on terrorism, insurgency, and other criminal activities by dominating the cyberspace. The Cyber Warfare Command since its creation has been a tool used by the Nigerian Army to monitor ongoing activities across the country, real time, as they occur. It also played host to the Nigerian Army Situation Room for the 2019 general elections security monitoring. Barely nine months after the official launch of the Cyber Warfare Command, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buratai, has completed the accommodation quarters of personnel of the command at its newly designed headquarters in Giri, in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The two buildings, which will serve as accommodation for personnel of the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, have been beautifully and tastefully furnished by the Chief of Army Staff to give officers and soldiers comfort even as they serve their fatherland. The construction of this well built and furnished quarters has raised the morale of cyber warfare command personnel and provided them with the most befitting and comfortable accommodation with all the necessary amenities to enable us to perform our duties optimally. It also shows the high level of priority that the Chief Army Staff has accommodated has accorded the Nigerian Cyber Warfare Command in its desire to take the Nigerian Army to enviable heights through the adoption of up-to-date technology and information system for enhancement security and efficiency of communication. The Chief Army Staff, sir, may I once again thank you for this noble and visionary initiative and the drive to establish Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command that every Nigerian personnel and indeed every Nigerian is proud of. The Nigerian Army Corps of Military Police, an arm of the Nigerian Army, saddled with the responsibility of maintaining internal discipline within the Nigerian Army, have had its proposed headquarters complex abandoned for years now, but recently got the attention of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General T.Y. Buratai, who directed for the remodeling and completion of the structures. The complex has a multi-purpose hall, canteen for staff, car park areas, motor transport section, military police SIB, and standard interrogation rooms, among others. This military police headquarters, when completed, will indeed stand as one of the best in Africa, a pride to the Nigerian army. This structure you are seeing right behind me is the proposed headquarters for Nigerian Army Corps of Military Police. It's located at Shehu Musare Radua Barracks here in Abuja. The, you know, since the military, the army headquarters moved from Lagos to Abuja in the early 90s, the military police has no office, permanent office headquarters. So the chief of army staff, in his wisdom, decided to have a befitting structure for headquarters, Nigeria Army Corps of Military Police. The welfare and comfort of officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army is of topmost priority to the Chief of Army Staff as he pays on scheduled visits to different Army divisions and formations to get first-hand information on how his men are faring. One of such visits, he was at 1 Brigade Garrison, Guzo Samfara State, where he directed the remodeling and rehabilitation of the barracks for his officers and soldiers and that the barracks be connected to the national grid for the comfort of his men and their families. Uh, when I first assumed command, in fact, uh, all these blocks here were dilapidated. They were built over a long time um, by the defense headquarters, I'm sorry, by the Minister of Defense, but over a long time, they became dilapidated because they were not occupied. And by the time we moved to this place, this place was inhabitable for soldiers. But when the chief of staff came here, he's been here twice to show the importance he attached to troops welfare. He came in here and saw uh, the state of the barrack and quickly directed those concerned to get the barrack to the state. What you're seeing here is it's very pleasing to the eye, but it wasn't like this before. We thank God for the progress we have made so far. 
and we thank God for the inspiration of our uh, the leadership of the Joam staff to enable us to come this far. This gesture by Lieutenant General Tuko Yusuf Buratai has greatly boosted the morale of officers and soldiers of one brigade garrison, which has in turn helped to stabilize the security situation in Zamfara State and brought relief to the people of the state that were hitherto held captive by marauding bandits. A visit to the barracks at night will truly show the importance of electricity that was non-existent since the formation and operationalization of the brigade. The 8th Division, headquartered in Sokoto, covering northwest of Nigeria, was not left out in the developmental agenda of the Chief of Army Staff, as projects could be seen almost at all the formations visited. The headquarters, 26th Battalion, was renovated to enable officers and soldiers have a better working environment, aimed at boosting the morale of officers and soldiers in their national assignment of securing the nation. So we are presently approaching 26th Battalion Arms Store, still courtesy of our Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General T.Y. Boratai. As you can see, the building we are just about entering now is the old arms store of the battalion with cracks all over because of the probably the soil here and then the faulty foundation. You can see cracks all over, everywhere. So based on the intervention of the Chief of Army Staff, a new arm store is being constructed just directly behind, bigger and better constructed. And what we did behind there, we tried to use direct labor as well as the inputs of engineers. First, we started by having a ground beam as our foundation put four courses and then we now did another ground beam up to the level that you are seeing to your right there. We are trying to see that the one we are building now will have some level of immunity on the earth movement to see how it can survive. This has been here time immemorial since the beginning of this virus. So that's why instead of doing any renovation, we say, look, there is no need to do any renovation. Let's just build another one and Bring it down since we have the resources. It's a very massive uh, water project that the Chief of Army Staff has decided to undertake here. There used to be perennial water issue here so seriously that at the first uh, stage he intervened, we had water on a one day, two day off. But uh, we, we made a presentation to him letting him know that this thing can be done and he believe in the uh, thinking of the general officer commanding and he came up with the idea of okay let's fix this water project this is one of the substation so at the end of the day the entire barrack is captured every office every accommodation every living quarters for the troops so this is just uh, one of the three substations that uh, this one is going to serve the officers' quarters. This one served the entire barrack here. The headquarters of three division of the Nigerian Army in Jos, Plateau State, is one of the numerous beneficiaries of the innovative leadership style of the Chief of Army Staff. We have quite a number of uh, projects that the Chief of Army Staff has within a span of uh, nine months approved of and we have been able to ensure that they, they help in motivating our men and at the same time to in us being able to bring in uh, you know uh, the civil society to also partake in our activities uh, for example you know the the warrant officers and sergeants mess at one point was really in a bad situation but if you have a look at it right now it's so befitting now that uh, you know uh, our sergeants and our warrant officers invite you know, personnel to come in. Uh, we also, right now in the pipeline, we have the Maxwell Kobe integrated water supply system. Now that water supply system is supposed to be able to provide an independent water system for both the cantonment and the adjoining uh, uh, community, the Jebu Basa and then the Dutsa and Kura and then also Miango and Rukuba. 
So they are going to be, and believe you me, it is a major, it's a first of its kind, first of all, in the, in the Nigerian army because uh, there's a dam with a, with a capacity of over uh, 50 million cubic uh, liters of, of, of water. That will be made available at the end of uh, its rehabilitation. Uh, water would not be a problem, and the Chief of Army Staff has been particularly passionate about it. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General T.Y. Burutai, in his determination to ensure comfort for officers and soldiers at the barracks, has graciously approved the rehabilitation of the dam at Maxwell Kobe Cantonment, Joss Plateau State. This project is meant to solve the perennial water shortage that has bedeviled the cantonment and environs for so many years now, since the collapse of the dam decades ago. A visit to the dam site shows the enormous work that is ongoing to ensure the barracks and surrounding communities get portable drinking water. The water supply from the water board is perennial. It's a kind of, it comes, they supply whenever. So, and that is the main reason why we have this water shortage in the barrack. It's like the chief of army staff commissioning this to this edifice is like a waste because it's not fully utilized. And that is the reason for the dam. That is the reason for the dam. So because at the, the end, dam. yes, we'll go to the dam. At the end of the day, the dam will be feeding these two, these two tanks. And then that is about it. On completion of the dam project, it is expected to provide 540 million cubic meters of water and a treatment plant to be connected to 33 kVA power supply and a standby 500 kVA generator to serve the water project. For the treatment plant for this, this large dam is, is going to have two tanks. The raw water tank that will take water from the dam and get treated in a treatment plant, a complex treatment plant. Then after treated, it will not be, the water will not be conveyed into a clear water tank. Both tanks are concrete, concrete tanks, um, half submerged. Then after clearing, after treating that water and storing in the clear water tank, it will not be conveyed by pump very strong pump to that, those twin surface tank for use. And even right here in the treatment plant complex itself, we will still have overhead tank that can deliver water to anybody that goes in there to fetch water. The dam is also expected to serve aquaculture and agricultural purposes. It is to be used to rear fishes of all kinds and provide water to farmers who are farming around the water project. Here, a training school meant to improve the professional quality of officers and soldiers of the division was built to actualize the vision of General Buratai for a professionally responsive Nigerian army in the discharge of his constitutional roles. The division has a human rights office which caters for both personnel and members of the public who have complaints of any rights abuse. Um, since the commissioning of the three division human rights decks, that was the 22nd of May 2019, We've had um, recorded a number of 40 cases reported. 80% of these cases have been treated, 10% are under investigation, and 10% are unconfirmed. So, and we also have a radio program. Um, we air every Tuesday by 10.30 on 90, um, 101.9 JFM. So this program enables civilians to call in and ask questions bordering on civil military affairs. And it also bridges the gap between the military and the civil populace. One of the greatest strengths of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General T.Y. Buratai, is his determination to attempt the impossible, so long as it will give his soldiers the motivation needed to carry out their national assignment of safeguarding the nation. A visit to 82 Division in Ababa, Enugu State, General Buratai have been able to solve the age-long issue of portable drinking water problem faced by his officers and soldiers and indeed the entire surrounding communities. Enugu State is known for its perennial water shortage problems, majorly because of its geographical location. But with the efforts of the Nigerian Army, 
The state is moving towards becoming self-sufficient as far as water supply is concerned. There has been a, a, the water from the Inugu State Water Board. But as time went on, because of the deterioration in the utilities, for over 20 years, there has been perennial water problem in this cantonment. So the, because of that, the chief of army staff, General Bratai, gave instruction when he came for a visit. When he came for a visit, that, uh, that uh, when it was complained to him that uh, there is no water because of the water problem. He said, okay, the GOC should look at the possibility of whether they will establish a water treatment plant here. So a Reiki is carried out and uh, the drawings were done and the chief approved it for the engineers to carry out the construction. We sent 40,000 liters to officers' quarters. We sent 30,000 liters to the medical center. Then the balance. Then 64,000 liters, which we sent up here. The balance, we send it and accumulate it. After two days, we now release it to the barrack for the soldiers and their family to use. So at the end, the capacity of this water treatment plant, all in all, is 240,000 liters. We treat 240,000 liters every single day. The 34 Artillery Brigade in Obinze, Oweri, Imo State, has also felt this transformational agenda of the Lieutenant General T.Y. Burutai-led Nigerian Army as the barracks is wearing a better look as a result of remodeling and reconstruction works carried out on some of the housing accommodation of officers and soldiers by the Chief of Army Staff. Water problem of residents of the barracks has also been addressed, making life easier for families of soldiers. If you came as of last year in this bag, we look for that. We say that is it human being that live here, but now we are all happy for the renovation it for us. It's fine and we are enjoying it. Before we didn't have water, we look for where to get water, but we can. We so also thank the chief of army staff and the GOC and the rest of the officers to thank them. So when we are back from northeast, we meet the water. It's working normal. The barrack is okay, but some of the block that are waiting, some of them they are not rotating. But next month or next year, we are waiting to see whether the authority can help us and do the one way remain. The Goodluck Abella Jonathan Barracks, housing the 14th Brigade in Ohafia Abia State, since its creation, was faced with severe water shortage that has made life unbearable for residents of the barracks. But today, the soldiers and their families are singing a new song as they now have water to use any time of the day. We are very thankful for our Chief of Army staff. He's ever since the water, normally we don't have water before, but since since now, since this year, things have been changed. I thank the God because he's, the, he's our maker. And secondly, to the chief of farming staff. See, there is no rain. Sometimes we used to go to town to fetch water. In fact, we even buy. We buy water from town. And at times, we used to buy from tankers to come and give us water. Now we can come out and get water without, sometimes without fighting. But like before, we can fight because of the water. But now, things are okay. The life of a soldier today, no doubt, has greatly been impacted positively by the leadership style of the Chief of Army staff, making the work environment better, giving officers and soldiers the needed human capital development to improve their output, ensuring that their homes and families have the needed social amenities. No wonder the great achievement that is being recorded by the Nigerian army so far. There are many projects spread across Nigeria, and these have added to enhance the efficiency and performance of the Nigerian Army. 
The lost glory of the army that was once dreaded and respected around the world has now been restored. And today, this has made it truly the pride of the nation.